In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts and data to help us answer the question, are the bears back in business? 100% of this week's video was recorded after the close on Friday, April 19th. In last week's video, we referenced the chart of the S&P 500 on the right side of your screen and said these three areas could act as potential support if we fast forward to after the close on Friday, April 19th and see where we stand. We're still in the vicinity of the first anchored volume weighted average price line here. Overshoots are not uncommon, but the safe thing to do here is to assume that this has been taken out until the market proves otherwise. The updated levels, 48.40 here, that's tied to the October low. This level here, 46.94 is the anchored volume weighted average price line tied to last summer's high. Not making any assumptions about what the market is going to do here, here, or here. These are simply reference points. Right now, this is telling us we should be open to more downside until the market's able to pop back above. As we noted, we've had three straight days of significant risk-off behavior. We wanna make sure that we think about that in a longer-term context. A concept that we've covered many times, question for market wizards. In other words, in order to score really large gains, you have to be willing to see those gains erode significantly before getting out of the market. Answer, I can't see any other way. If you get too careful about not risking your gains, you're not going to be able to extract a large profit. So let's move to the left side of the screen and take a look at an admittedly extreme example within the context of the secular trend that took place between 1982 and this peak here in the year 2000. Prior to the crash on Black Monday in October of 1987, from this point down here to this point here before the crash, the S&P 500 gained 229%. Hypothetically, if you liquidated your entire portfolio and were too scared to get back into the market, how did that impact you, hypothetically, relative to this quote over here? The gains before Black Monday, 229%. The gain after Black Monday, in the context of one of the strongest secular trends in history, 582%. And given we're in an environment with rising interest rates, it's not likely that even if we're in a secular bull market that we're going to see gains of this magnitude. But if you cut these numbers in half, they're still very appealing. And the real point is, from a timing and magnitude perspective, we're long-term investors. This is several years. This is several years. This type of magnitude, cut it in half. This type of magnitude, cut it in half. Puts these types of normal drawdowns into perspective. We don't want to make any assumptions about what's going to happen next. But if we look at the chart of SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, in the lower right-hand corner of your screen on April 19th, this was a scary correction back here. It wasn't a lot of fun, just as the last three sessions haven't been a lot of fun. But notice where we are here. SPY is still hovering up near 500. This low down here, 410. Point of the exercise. After the 100% normal and to be expected correction was over, within the context of a longer term uptrend, in this case denoted by a still upward sloping 250 day moving average, the market went on to make a higher high. So if we look at this chart down here, even if we look at the chart of XLK up here, haven't made any significant lower low here. On April 19th, this is significantly above this low down here in October. More downside possible? Absolutely, positively, yes. Might even say more downside until proven otherwise is probable, but we could have said the same thing in this window here. Sounds really easy with the benefit of hindsight to say you should have gotten out here. When to do that, real time, very difficult. And then once you make a decision to sell, you've got to make a decision when to get back in. And that can be very difficult with counter trend moves within the context of even a shorter term downtrend. It's very easy to destroy value with over trading between this point A here and this point B here. 
If you minimize your trading activity within the context of an existing uptrend, meaning for the most part, you try to hold your positions, when you get to this point here, your profits are higher than they've ever been. And conceptually that occurs with no trades between point A and point B. We don't know if this uptrend up here for XLK is going to remain intact. In fact, we took some profits off the table on Friday. But for the most part, that was based on relative action in XLK and not based on the market's primary trend down here. If you look at this objectively, this is clearly an uptrend. This is the 250-day moving average on the bottom in black. And the hard data agrees with that. During Friday's session, we scored the trend strength model, a component of the CCM market model. These numbers are reflective of still strong trends and they align with the image in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Secular volatility model says we still firmly look like we're in a secular trend and secular bull markets have a tendency to go on to print higher highs after corrections. In fact, that's the definition of an uptrend. While there's no question the bears have made progress on shorter term time frames, if we look at SPY divided by SHY, one to three year treasuries, these bands in here could still act as potential support. The anchored volume weighted average price line tied to the high from last summer here could act as potential support. And one of these bands up here is tied to the October low last year. If these don't hold on any of these charts, we'll learn something about increasing bearish probabilities. And that may happen. It may happen next week. It hasn't happened yet. It's noteworthy. There have been some subtle and meaningful shifts on a handful of charts, including this one here. SPY divided by XLK. This is a leadership chart. When all three major markets in the U.S. started to rally in early 2023, Soon thereafter, that ratio dropped below the 250-day moving average, and it stayed below it during this risk-on period the entire time until Friday's session on April 19th. This is a subtle shift and potentially meaningful. It tells us that it's possible, even within the context of this existing uptrend in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, that from a leadership perspective, again, it's possible that XLK is going to take a break. Now, this is during Friday's session. We've come back to this gap here, come back to this gap here, and we're still in the general vicinity. Here's what the weekly downtrend looks like in an RSP during the bear market in 2022. This is what we look like on Friday, April 19th. This still looks like a bullish breakout above this base here with price above the 30-week, 40-week, and 50-week moving averages here, and price well above an upward sloping 200-week moving average. So right now, for RSP, this looks like a pullback within the context of an existing uptrend. If we look at the weekly chart for SPY, the same can be said. This looks like a pullback within the context of a longer-term uptrend. Obviously, that's subject to change. And that's why it's important to acknowledge that there are some subtle shifts that are taking place or that took place really in the last three or four sessions. This looks a little bit different than anything that we saw in here. And if we look at XLK, it too remains above an upward sloping 30 week in blue, 40 week in red and 50 week in green and well above an upward sloping 200 week. Very difficult to look at this chart in its present form and say this looks discernibly different from this correction here, a correction that was followed by a higher high. Price gets into this area here, and that's a subtle and meaningful shift. And if we were to look at SPY relative to XLK during Friday's session on the 19th, you can see we get this little pop up here. This too looks subtly different, but that was the case right here in 2016 and that came after the major low in february of 2016 the market did show some weakness in here but that was within the context of an existing uptrend this pop up here very similar and in this case there was more downside so this and this somewhat of a mixed bag same thing here 
The ratio pops above here. Really good things happen in the S&P after that. So this move here, looking back at three similar moves, really doesn't tell us a whole lot. This one's full bore risk on. This one, there's more downside. And this one, there's more volatility within the context of an existing uptrend. Hence, when we've got a look like this, we still have price above an upward sloping 250 day. We don't want to overreact. And at the same time, we don't want to ignore the shifts that we're seeing on several relative charts. This is a ratio chart of SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, relative to XLP, or Defensive Consumer Staples. It's as of the close on Friday, April 19th. Three sessions ago, this ratio was up here, hovering right around or possibly even above the 20-day moving average. So it's noteworthy in the short run, in the last three sessions, this is that risk-off look that we've talked about. We saw something similar here, spike in fear here, right near the October low. You can also make a rational argument that this move here late in 2021 is very, very similar to this move. And that's true in many respects. There are also some significant differences. This is where the S&P 500 peaked in very early January 2022. And soon thereafter, this ratio was trading well below a turning over or flattening out 250-day moving average in black. We're pretty far away at the moment from a confident-looking 250-day moving average in black here. In the white space between these moving averages, that's a strong trend look. You can see they're a lot tighter in here. So we'll just see how this evolves. Right now, this is noteworthy but not particularly alarming from a longer term perspective. If the ratio were to get down here, very similar to this look in here, concerns would increase. Also notice when the S&P 500 peaks here, this is early 2022, look at the 20 day moving average in blue. Probably within two or three trading sessions, it's below all of the moving averages. As of the close on Friday, April 19th, the 20 day blue was still on top hadn't even crossed below the 50-day moving average yet. This is a much more confident or less concerned look here in terms of timing relative to this look in here. Doesn't mean there's not more downside in these markets. This look here would tend to align with a normal correction within the context of an existing uptrend, that type of scenario, rather than a new bear market scenario. Similar situation here. This is the anchored volume weighted average price chart that we showed last week. This is potentially an outstanding entry point for IWM. We're still above all of these important anchored volume weighted average price lines. And this is that subtle difference, that look that we had in the S&P 500 in May of last year, 2023, where we consolidated above the anchored volume weighted average price lines. Thus far, we haven't dropped into the cluster. If we do, we'll learn something. And more importantly, if we get down here, that would add to concerns. But right now, this still looks like consolidation in a potentially advantageous setup. Interest rates are a big issue here. Fed expectations, inflation expectations. But right now, IEI, three to seven year treasuries, the ETF, just come back to the anchored volume weighted average price lines. If we break through those lines, as we did here in July of last year, that would imply potentially additional downside or risk off behavior. So we'll see how this unfolds here. This is an area of potential support that didn't hold in here. It was broken and the stock market continued to drop until late October of last year. You can Google the title on your screen here, Yahoo Finance. The table shows us that higher yields don't necessarily mean long-term gloom and doom for the stock market. And on a relative basis, we really haven't seen anything yet that says gold has taken a leadership position relative to the S&P 500. In isolation, gold looks excellent. We own some gold, so we're not negative on gold. But for the most part, this has been 
a confused mess between the two instruments going back to early 2022. If GLD divided by SPY can get out here and stay out here, which it was unable to do here, that would be noteworthy. It would be especially noteworthy if the ratio could get out here. The longer above, the more meaningful it would become. But right now, there's just not a lot of change on this chart. As we noted earlier, the last three or four sessions really just, it was a sprint for the exits. Full bore risk off in the short term. And according to Dean's research, you can find his Twitter handle right here. The annualized return for the S&P 500, with that type of oversold condition, outstanding. Simply telling us to keep an open mind about the potential for better than expected outcomes in the days and weeks ahead. It's probably fair to classify the past three to five sessions as a periodic freakout. Periodic freakouts are a hallmark of all markets. Out of the 17 times the VIX jumped from ultra calm conditions, only one led to a more than 10% loss within the next three months for the S&P 500. This too would align with keeping an open mind about a 100% normal and to be expected drawdown relative to the magnitude. And that would include this number, this number, and this number. We covered similar topics in these videos in this window here during what was a gut-wrenching correction. They're never fun, and there's always a reason the market's falling. You don't fall like this for no reason. The question is, are the concerns large enough to flip the market from an uptrend to a downtrend? During the session on Friday, RSP was green. It finished green, up 0.38%. Tech-heavy SPY and most tech ETFs, they were drilled. We still don't have significant shifts on the longer-term charts. This is during the session on Friday, April 19th. It's a daily anchored volume-weighted average price chart. Step one for a trend change would be to exceed these anchored volume-weighted average price lines up here from this 2024 high. You can see we were rejected there, rejected there, haven't even really made it back at this point. And if we're able to do that, an RSP can launch some type of counter trend move within the context of a downtrend or attempt to flip the downtrend. It has a ton of potential overhead resistance in these areas here based on longer term trends, including the anchored volume weighted average price line that goes back to early 2023 right here. And all of that may happen, but right now RSP is in a long term downtrend relative to SPY. Just a few sessions ago, RSP relative to SPY here was near a 52 week low and below all of the moving averages. During this session on Friday, April 19th, some improvement really doesn't look that great and still well below a downward sloping 250 day moving average in black. Wouldn't take a whole lot to get out here to this white space, so we'll keep an open mind. This is the chart that we covered extensively last week the look during the session on Friday, April 19th, is 2 p.m. Eastern Time. But I have to say that it aligns with more pain ahead in the short run. Even if we're just in a correction, it would be logical to get back to this line here, all of these lines, the clusters of lines, as we did during the correction last year. Not a prediction in any shape, form, or fashion. This did factor into our decision to take some profits off the table for XLK on Friday. As we noted last week, currently 2024 looks more like the correction in 2023 and really hasn't taken on the panic type look that we saw in 2022. We'll see how this evolves. If it gets out here, that would be a good step for the stock market bears and for those market participants rooting hard for inflation and gloom and doom. Up until Friday's session, the S&P 500 had held this gap. We closed Friday relatively close to it, but below it at 49.67. So this is another area of potential support here that potentially gave way on Friday. It's a DeMarc chart of the S&P 500 here during Friday's session. It's not a forecast in any shape, form, or fashion, but the propulsion target up here came in at 55.40 for the S&P 500 doesn't predict anything. It just says based on price movements 
here during the uptrend and this pullback here that we should be open to a rally that eventually makes it to 5540. And remember we said tech ETFs got drilled on Friday, April 19th. Having said that, if you didn't know that, there's really no new developments on the chart of RSP divided by XLK. So this is the equal weight S&P 500 divided by the tech sector ETF. If you're an RSP bull, you'd like to see this ratio get out into this area here. And more importantly, clear this orange anchored volume weighted average price line tied to this high in 2023. A lot of obstacles to overcome for RSP to flip this long-term downtrend to a long-term uptrend in favor of RSP. Even this move in 2022 turned out to be a counter trend move within the context of an existing downtrend. This is the chart in front of us today. We'll see how it evolves. We own both RSP and XLK, no bias. Is XLK daily during Friday's session also a very favorable propulsion target up here at 219.40? We're all the way down at 193.43. I can tell you this doesn't factor into anything that we're doing. It falls into the interesting category. Nothing more, nothing less. Price still hanging around this area here. Several gaps. Till proven otherwise, XLK looks very weak on a short-term basis. If we look at the moving averages in isolation, still have the slowest moving average, the 250-day up here in black, and it's downward sloping. If we add price into the equation here, you can see on April 12th, the ratio was below all of the moving averages, and this is telling us to keep an open mind about a relative flip. Now, we're not that far away now from that 250-day. Still a lot of work to do, even if we get out here. A full bore bullish look would have the 250 day on the bottom of this stack. The 20 day would be on the top and price would be above all of them. On April 12th, we really had almost a full bore bearish look, not quite, but let's say a 75 to 80% full bore bearish look. Again, we'll see how it evolves. April 12th, SPY divided by XLK. This is a discernible and potentially noteworthy shift here. This is the first time the ratio has been above the 250-day moving average in black for some time. This speaks to leadership. It's not a trend flip. It's an attempt at a trend flip. And it doesn't mean that XLK is necessarily in a downtrend. You can see here on April 19th, it's clearly still in an uptrend. Let's take a broader look at the weight of the evidence. RSP April 19th in isolation, massive area down here of potential support. All of it occurring above an upward sloping 250 day moving average in black. This is the equal weight S&P 500, including the tech sector. This looks like a bullish breakout of this general area here and a retest of it. And we could come all the way down into this area here and that would still be a retest of this breakout. Markets like to overshoot. From a risk reward perspective in its current form, this is not a particularly scary or intimidating chart. Compare and contrast the moving averages over here in 2022 during the downtrend with the moving averages over here in 2024 and the look when we were flipping from a downtrend to an uptrend. If you know stock market clouds, green span above the ratio here on December 31st, 2021, and the ratio above blue and red and blue and red kissing each other, that's a lot more intimidating than the look on April 18th. As the stock market's peaking here in 2007, this is where the ratio is. This is where the ratio is down here on April 18th has perked up a little bit, but still nowhere near this level up here and not taking on a level like this in Q1 of 08. This is relevant and this is relevant. It's corrective type or risk off behavior in the short run. You can see a little bit of a shift here. This is the look of the chart on Friday, XLP divided by SPY. We want to keep an open mind about the potential for additional pain ahead. This is still a downtrend. Perspective, on April 18th, Thursday of this week, 
XLK was outperforming RSP for the month by 0.41%. So if something is shifting, we would be in the very, very early stages of that shift. You can see the ratio remains above an upward sloping 40 and 50 month moving averages in favor of XLK. You can pause your video player here, but this is not a recessionary look here or a maximum fear look. This is the look here in 2022. XLK divided by GLD, tech divided by gold. This is a very rare oversold reading here on daily RSI. Rare is noteworthy. It doesn't mean bullish. It doesn't mean bearish. It tells you to pay closer attention. We'll also learn something at this upward sloping trend line here. April 18th, subtle bearish short-term shift for XLK. This factored into taking some profits on Friday. Notice during the correction last year, there was a massive bounce in XLK. When we corrected last year, we did not go straight down. The reference point on the daily chart Last year's correction held at an upward sloping 175 day moving average. Price is still above an upward sloping 175 day moving average. And it comes in in this general area of potential support. Also leaves the door open to potential downside. This is the weekly cloud of SPY on Thursday, April 18th, still checking all of the bullish boxes. We could have said the same thing here and the market did have additional downside but that was a counter trend move within the context of an existing uptrend there's no question in the shorter term this is the eight day out to the 50 day the markets until proven otherwise are more vulnerable but from a longer term perspective this still clearly looks like an uptrend 10 month moving average 40 month moving average secular uptrend secular uptrend secular uptrend if we zoom in, this is a constructive look. Look at the same moving averages here after the major low in 2020. Still looks like an uptrend. Dow Jones composite daily, not particularly alarming. Weekly, not particularly alarming. This is noteworthy from a bearish perspective relative to interest rates and inflation. But if we were to look at LQD, the corporate bond ETF, it's still holding above the 250-day moving average during Friday's session, calling for some patience on interest rates. If you look at the weekly cloud for AGG and you look at MACD, this looks like a counter trend within the context of an uptrend. The cloud says the same thing that MACD says. Dow Jones Industrial Average chart on your screen as of Thursday's close, not particularly bearish, holding the breakout. The Dow during Friday's session was green. Don't want to overreact. Weekly uptrend. Even the NASDAQ 100 still has a constructive long-term look. See MYSE composite as of Thursday's close. This is not a panicky type look. This is what a downtrend looks like here in 2022. This is what we look like this week. S&P 500 monthly this week. The faster eight month moving average in blue above the slower nine month moving average in red. Room for more downside? Absolutely, positively, yes. Does it still look like a weekly uptrend? It does. On the interest rate, inflation, and Fed front, this is still a much improved look relative to what we had in 2022. And right now, any move in this direction would be classified as a counter trend move within the context of a weekly uptrend with price above a green cloud. Very similar message on this daily chart of BSV. It doesn't look like it's time to panic relative to inflation, Fed policy, and interest rates. Lot of potential support down here after a constructive bullish breakout during the risk on rally in Q4 of last year. There's still white space between price and the 250 day, also telling us that we could correct further and maintain this uptrend. Even emerging market bonds are telling us not to overreact relative to inflation and interest rates. EMB holding the bullish breakout above this base. Chart dated April 19th at 3.06 p.m. Eastern Time. Mexico breaking out 
This is 2013 here. That breakout is occurring as the 50-month moving average turns up. From a long-term perspective, this is not a scary chart. Almost everything that we said about the last chart applies to this chart, European financials. This is 2018 here. This is 2014 here. I think it's fair to say in the short run until proven otherwise, the answer to this question is yes. From a long-term perspective, not yet. But with some subtle shifts and significant risk-off behavior this week, and even with scores like this and this, it's extremely important that we take it day by day and continue to evaluate and trade the charts in front of us. If the charts shift in a material manner and interest rates continue to rise, we're going to have to be willing to reassess the probabilities. And we all know the only way that we can do that effectively is if we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates, or clients, may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.